I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled meeting for the City of Rocky Mountain City Council. It's currently 4:10. I apologize for the delay. We had a committee of the whole that uh, ran over a little bit. At this moment, though, I'd like for everybody to ask and observe a moment of silence for prayer. Thank you. This time I'd like to ask City Clerk if you'll please call the roll. Council Member Knight? Here. Blackwell? Here. Joyner? Here. TJ Walker? Here. Daltridge? Here. Harris? Here. Jabaris Walker? Here. Great, we have a quorum. So at this time, I'd like to uh, bring us to item number four to consideration of the following minutes. It's the minutes of the 2023 City Council Retreat, which was held May 3 through 5 of 2023. Minutes from the City Council Budget Work Sessions, May 25 and May 31 of 2023. And the consideration of the following regular uh, rescheduled Committee of the Whole meetings, June 12th, July 10th, and September 11th. This time I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So Motion made by Councilman Walker, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. Uh, this time uh, we have a, a request for a um, closed session for economic development. Is there a need for any other addition and or deletion, deletion to the agenda as is currently published? Yes. Yes, sir. Councilman Knight. Uh, yes, for the list of burn up houses that have been presented the last two council meetings. And the second thing is the um, energy efficiency program that we discussed. Thank you. Um, I, I, item nine, uh, Councilman Knight, item nine is a list of dilapidated residential structures. I assume that we would discuss the um, matter at that particular item. That's fine. Thank you. And uh, as for. Um, Energy efficient. Is there a specific motion that you want to entertain uh, at that moment, or is there something you just want brought forward for conversation? Uh, that, we to, to, to the agenda. that we add it to the agenda based okay. upon the update from the city manager. Okay, so I have now a Request that we add a closed session to the end of our agenda, and also we'll add an item nine, which would be a program update of our energy efficiency um, programs. Is that fairly stated? Thank you. Is there a, um, a motion? So moved. Motion made by Councilman Knight, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. So item nine will be the energy efficiency update and item 10 will be a closed session for economic um, development purposes. At this point, I'll turn the meeting over to our city manager, Keith Rogers Jr. for his update. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Our Parks and Recreation Department has begun holding their public input meetings for our comprehensive recreation master plan. Each meeting, there will be a meeting held in each ward and they will last from 15 to 20 minutes in regards to public participation and all meetings begin at 5.30 p.m. and will last to 7.30 p.m. So we ask that all residents go to RockyMountNC.gov for more information. Also, in observance of the Easter holiday, city offices will be closed this Friday on March the 29th. Please also note that Tar River Transit will not operate on Friday, but will resume operations on Saturday, March the 30th. The Imperial Center will also be closed on Easter Sunday, March 31st. However, garbage, recycling, and yard waste collection will proceed as normal. And finally, on Saturday, March the 30th, our Easter egg extravaganza will be held at Sunset Park from noon to 2 p.m. Children will have the opportunity to hunt for eggs by age groups. This will in doubt, no doubt be fun for the family as well as for the children. Thank you, Mayor. That completes my update. Thank you. Are there any questions or um, comments for our city manager? Yes, Councilman Joyner. Uh, not for our city manager, but I want to give a a shout out to our sanitation. Uh, one of the members of my ward, um, uh, 
husband was extremely sick and eventually passed, but they talked about how sanitation would stop by every day of picking up garbage to, to make sure that they were okay. And that at the point of her husband passing that she did not know that sanitation was paying such close attention that they came by and gave her support. Uh, and that is just commendable when we see our departments responding to our citizens in that way. So I just want to say to sanitation, thank you for doing what you do when nobody's looking. Thank you, Councilman Joyner. Yes. Okay. I'll uh, recognize Councilman Walker now. I so want to shout out the Rocky Mountain Event Center for hosting the biggest tournament this past for big shots with 130 teams participating. Um, I even saw some games going out to like 11 o'clock at night, and it was a beautiful thing to see people walking and moving downtown. So I want to shout out David Joyner and staff at the Rocky Mountain Event Center for what they're doing. Sure. <laughs> Maybe we need to add a shout out column here as an item on our regular yeah. schedule agenda. <laughs> Is there any other comments that uh, anybody has as it relates either to the manager? Yes, Councilman Knight. Yes, could we please move rapidly, quickly with that uh, plan for the hotel and parking deck? I see the green cones and red cones, blue cones all over the city, uh, which is a good thing, but the parking deck, we have asked um, that we would have that previously on our committee of the whole, but I think it's something that's urgent. Uh, for this community and build upon this, uh, the momentum that we are having now uh, with thousands and thousands of people coming to Rocky Mount. I would just like to see more interaction uh, with the city uh, providing other events during that time. Uh, I would like to see food trucks and just people from Rocky Mount being a part of visitors coming to Rocky Mount. I think that we are doing a good job, but we could do a better job. I just hope that all city employees, along with the citizens, if we would just um, take this moment that we can build upon and find out what else that we can do to expand what is working now. And that's uh, building upon what we already have, the event center. But I would like for the staff to put more time and effort but we know we have in thousands and thousands of people coming to have um, some other events uh, located in our downtown areas that visitors can uh, can participate with. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse Anyone me. else? Yes, Councilman uh, Black, uh, Walker. Thank you, Mayor. In lieu of your um, your new shout out column, I also want to uh, shout. Out, I believe it was Cummins team that participated in a cleanup uh, Tar River. But then also there are some young ladies here tonight that participated in a community cleanup within Ward Three. So I wanted to make sure we shouted them out as well in this effort of uh, just cleaning up the city. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Councilman Blackwell. I'm loving the shout outs. Um, <laughs> want to say uh, thank you to the um, City of Rocky Mount uh, Parks and Rec staff the Juneteenth committee. We had a phenomenal Motown event at the Imperial Center. Mm -hmm. um, sold out crowd, a um, lot of things going on everywhere and it was off the chain. And um, thank you to that. And then we're fixing the Imperial Center. I think that's the article should not read Imperial Center shut down. <laughs> we're fixing it, we're yes. fixing it. We had a wonderful time there um, two weekends ago. It was great. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else? Hearing none, we'll move on to item number seven, which are petitions to be received from the public. Uh, the public's petition portion of the City Council meeting is an opportunity for public comment. City Council appreciates your attendance and values all citizen input. This is an opportunity to express views and concerns about the City of Rocky Mount to the Council. However, in most cases, Council members will not respond to public comments, but may refer a matter to the City Manager or staff for follow-up. Time will be monitored in order to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have three minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the security officer prior to the opening of the city council meeting. If an organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. And if your comments are in regard to an item that is subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. If your comments are in regard to an evidentiary hearing, please uh, additional time may be granted. 
So the City Council has requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete a sign-in sheet, address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner, and personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated, and you'll be asked to sit down or removed from the meeting. Keep comments to three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Dr. Koo to the podium. Good afternoon. Mm. Earlier this month, the police department of the city hosted a forum to discuss the problem on homelessness. Obviously, homelessness has become a critical issue for the city, at least enough to warrant some public attention. At the forum, the solution presented to homeless people is information on where to go for temporary relief and other advice to mitigate their situation. Isn't this like taking some medicine to stop your headaches without addressing the flu that keeps infecting you? Or treating, or treating only the fever and pain without addressing the cancer that's going to kill you. While symptom, symptomatic relief needs immediate attention, unless you find a cause and deal with it, your actions only prolong suffering and essentially ineffective in the long run. Homelessness is a social disease. It is a societal problem. It is not some isolated issue that can be solved by band-aids. Together and with unemployment edu and education deprivation, poverty, health issue, stagnant wages, racial discrimination, etc., are social diseases that eat into the core of our society. I take issue with the direction of this forum because, number one, it puts the blame on individuals. That is why Mr. Brinkley was being showcased as an example. People were told that if you're homeless, it is because you're either lazy, have mental problems, or come from hope, broken homes, etc. How can you pull yourself up by the bootstraps if you do not even have boots to begin with? Number two, it should at least be mentioned why a rich country like the United States cannot take care of its own citizens at every level while spending our tax dollars conducting forever wars abroad and participating in genocide on Palestinians. Even a small fraction of the defense budget is enough to supply homes for every citizen here if the government so wished. Number three, it is unbelievable that we have a homeless forum without inviting the participation of folks who have struggled for affordable housing for decades in this city. Don't you see the disconnection here? I acknowledge this is still a bandit solution because affordable housing is tied to living wages, employment, and availability of other social safety nets like food and fuel subsidies for those who qualify. Eventually, the solution is for, is for the government to use our tax dollars to give us back goods and services we deserve and need, to bring people out of poverty, to raise our living standards, and to extend, extend life expectancy. It seems that majority of our city, le city leaders still do not have the vision different from the blood draining policies of the federal government or to forge a different path for Rocky Mount using whatever it is within our means. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Nathleen Ari to the podium, please. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Manager, City Council members, and others present. My name is <clears throat> Nathalyn O'Ree, and I live in Rocky Mount. And I brought my little light, and I hope it'll shine. February 22, I got a phone call saying that I was um, chosen to be the community member of the month for the Meadowbrook community, and I got very excited. And I was told I was going to sign to put in my yard, I was going to take a picture, I was going to get some gifts, and I got very excited. And why was I so excited? Well, let me take you back. I was born in a house with no inside utilities, and I endured. I grew up, got indoor facilities, I endured laboring in the fields of tobacco in Duplin County over 30 acres per summer. That motivated me to go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I learned a lot of things, a lot of things. And I made it. 
I made it. When I came out of the university, the first thing I did, I became a Yoke Fellow Prison Ministry volunteer, concerned about those who were incarcerated. I advanced to becoming a guardian at Lydum, somebody concerned about children taken from their homes because of nothing that they've done wrong and making sure that they were put in safe environments. And I've worked hard in my community and I've worked hard in my church and for someone in my community to give me a little recognition for my life from the city of Rocky Mount, I was elated. But then I said, well, what about my husband? You know, can he be in the picture? <laughs> what about my community president? Can he be in the picture? What about my city councilman? You know, I'm not, this community is in Rocky Mount. So why not my city councilman? And I said, well, what about the mayor? <laughs> you know, isn't he going to be in my picture? And, you know, I, I wanted this to be a, a symbol of unity between the community and the city building, you know, the workers of Rocky Mount, because I was told I was being the, you know, Ward 1, then we'll go next month to Ward 2. And I became concerned. I said, well, look, when are we going to do this? Because there's only, you know, a few days left in March. And I was told it's going to take a couple of weeks. Why? Why? You know, I'm trying to let my little light shine. And I will. You know, because, thank you. Thank you, Miss O'Ree. And I believe your light does shine. Thank you. <laughs> right. Yes, Councilman Joyner. Is she still nominated for that, or is she still, that still going to happen? I, I don't. What is it? Mr. Manager, I, I don't know enough to speak to it, Councilman. We, we can follow up, Council. I can get you, I can follow up. Okay. I'd like to invite Robert Davis to the podium. Hello, councilmen, everyone, citizens, everyone here. Uh, some of you may remember me because after retirement, I became active in my city. And we worked hard and prayed hard to try to establish a, a common communication between the city and the citizens. Let us work together. Because you can't sit here in your corner office and tell me what's going on in the community. Because you don't know. And that's how we've made so many bad mistakes and how undeserving communities right now because somebody sat in the Iowa Tower and made uh, decisions to affect these communities and didn't know what they were doing. If we want a city that's about growth, people coming together, we got to work together. And anybody that thinks they can sit in the office down here and tell what's going on in one of these communities, that's the first person that needs to be fired. Because they don't know their job. They don't know anything about reality. And we are beyond that, I pray and hope. Now, <clears throat> I don't understand why we are having problems now trying to work together. Uh, like the city manager said, he was going to get with the councilman. I want you to get with more than the councilman on the answer to that one, sir. I'd like to have the answer to that myself, since I'm the president for uh, Meadowbrook Community Association. And I worked hard talking with uh, people to try to get this thing organized because the city was looking at one group of folks, but who looking at the people in the community and those that support the community that should attend such a ceremonious thing for this lady. That was my thing. I didn't come and ask the city to, to look at who would be there. I just asked, when are we going to do it? And these excuses about uh, two or three weeks. First of all, 
we all know the reality of why we're pushed out in two or three weeks. We're not cheering, don't play games. You know, and, and that's the thing of it. I don't care if you're sitting in the White House. There's still grown people who got minds and can think. Don't play games with us. If you don't want to work with us, come out and tell us. We won't bother you. But we have done a lot of great things in this city working together. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Councilman Knight. Um, Ms. Natalie Norrie and Mr. Davis were very cordial <laughs> in um, their concern. Um, they are very cordial, but I'm very disheartened heartened today um, a new somewhat about the program, um, the Neighborhood Award. And uh, when we was on our monthly community meeting with Meadowbrook, it was mentioned and I really didn't know anything about it. I heard it and I did not. And then when Miss Ori was going to be honored and asked if her council member could be there, then it was a delay in it. Uh, they did not want me in the picture. <clears throat> when I've worked hard with all of my neighborhoods in Ward 1 and all over the city, pretty much, uh, then Ms. Ori asked if the mayor could be in the picture. And so if our staff and city manager are going to have that attitude, to try to circumvent council members being a part of something that we participate in mostly every month with our constituents. It's very sad. And if they cannot present this award to Ms. O'Ree with her council member, we need to get rid of it. Not just me, but Ward 1, 2, 3, 4. If any council member wants to be a part or is a part of their neighborhood association, that should be commended. And for the staff to try to undercut any council member is unacceptable. And I don't appreciate it. And it shouldn't be tolerated. And this council shouldn't allow it. Not just for me, but any of us. And that's all I have to say on that. And if we can't, if the staff can't get it together, then maybe the council should establish their own neighborhood award for their citizen. I think that's what we need to do. Because the staff just can't get it together. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, this time I'll invite Candace Michelle Herring to the podium. Hello. How y'all doing today? Good. Hello. My you name are. is Candace Herring. <clears throat> I live on Ambler Avenue right beside Mary Warren. And let me just be honest, I'm very nervous. So I'm gonna get that out the way. You're doing great. All right, so um, I just come to talk about uh, a, a few things. Um, Y'all don't see what I see. Y'all don't see what I see. I've only been living here in Rocky Mount for one year. And it's run rapid with drugs. And an infestation of literally drugs. I have eight children. Eight, two are autistic, one is nonverbal. People speeding all through down there. That's not fair. I've come here to Rocky Mountain to better my life. I was homeless in Wake County. So I came, I came here for a better start and a better life. And what did I come to? Because all I see is drugs around me, so God placed it in my heart to build up boxes here in the city that can combat and help with fighting for uh, fighting 
food insecurity and that was helping. The boxes are literally empty every single day. That was torn down and I have since built another one but on my church home at St. Mark. But I would like the city's blessings for me to be able to build the boxes all over Nash, Edgecombe, and Wilson County. Because some people are able to get to food banks. I know that I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have the time. So I spend my spare time driving to Four Oaks, North Carolina. Not even in Rocky Mount because there's not enough food resources. And if it is... My people can't get to them. Also, I would like to talk about um, getting the houses that are around maybe turned into something. They're not that bad. I see the beauty in it. So if y'all could just help us get the houses and maybe turn it into something for the community, for the kids, they don't have anything to do. Springtime's coming up and summertime is, but when they walk outside, what are they going to see? Drugs? Okay, so we're doing a cleanup on Branch Street. That's, it's really bad there, Mayor, please. If y'all could just come and see for yourself. They do drugs in broad daylight. I can't walk by with my children. It's not a sight to see. Not a sight for the seniors to see, such as Mrs. Warren. And there's a seniors village right across from Branch Street. Um, I want to clean it up. I will do it myself. I really will. I did it on Buena Vista last week. I will do it myself if y'all could just help me and just support me in what I'm trying to do. I'm just one person, but I, I believe it'll cause a ripple effect. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Councilman Joyner. Thank you so much for that. I want to say that you don't have to build those raised beds. Uh, we do have, with the parks and recs, uh, those um, uh, community um, gardening meetings, and we are building raised beds, so I'd love for you to get your information, one, to do that. Uh, secondly, the chief and uh, the city, we are doing walkthroughs in those areas uh, to begin to look at some of the crime. And, uh, we've been really working hard, to not only Mr. Mayor Warren, but the pastors in that area. And this coming uh, tomorrow, uh, we're having a meeting at Victory um, off in Coker Road in Ward 3. Please come to that meeting. Uh, we're talking about the very same thing that you're talking about. Thank you for the hard work that you're doing. We will not only unite with you in that work, but we want to say a lot of that work has been going on. And there's some progress, um, uh, Mr. Charles Robinson, with the senior housing. We are working with him to do the work in that area with that store to try to get some, to make sure that it's safe for our seniors. So we commend you for what you're doing, but you are not doing it alone. Um, my number is 252. 883-9460. We will be there with you, and thanks to Ms. Mayor Warren that we've been doing this for years. Thank you, Councilman Joyner. I'll recognize you, Councilman Knight. Thank you for coming. Um, but we see, some of us see what you see, and um, in, in that area, which is your ward, uh, but it affects all of us, whether it's wards one, two, three, or four. And that's an ongoing problem that we have talked with our chief. Correct, Chief? Correct, Chief? Yes. <laughs> Can the chief? Council. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And we also talked with uh, Sheriff Clee Atkinson as well. Uh, we see what you see, but do others see what you see? We cannot enforce anything. Uh, that's why we have a police chief and now 167 police officers with 15 in the um, academy uh, with a 36% increase in starting pay um, that can help us clean this stuff up along with our citizen. We see it. I was over there not too long ago. My church is in there area. We see it. But we need for other people to see it as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Knight. Did you want to speak? Come, Councilman Blackwell, and then I recognize Councilman. I was going to go back to another issue. I did not want to minimize uh, what Ms. Heron said, and thank you 
Thank you, Sister Heron, for, there you go. Thank you so much for your initiative. And thank you all for supporting her in that area. Um, if we're going to make this a better place, everybody's got to be involved. And we all got to get committed to do it together. And, um, and what you're doing deserves everybody's help. Uh, thank you for what you're doing. And I hope we'll be able to formalize whatever the approach is later. Um, in times past, we would have referred you to our city manager. Uh, to work with you on how the city can formally assist. So that step was not taken. Mr. Mayor, I would recommend that someone follow up with her um, so, that, so that you know that there's more than the um, political commitment that it can translate into some support and help down the road. I also wanted to go back to a matter that was discussed. I'm not sure everybody clearly understood. Um, it, it's about a city-initiated recognition program of people who volunteer in their communities just like you every day. And, um, and I am fine with that. It's wonderful to recognize people, you know. But the issue came, I think I just want to be clear, it seems that someone on staff had a problem with the city manager and the mayor being involved in a picture. Well, that's a little sad. So what I'm hoping is that that was somebody's error in judgment or misinterpretation of what it is that we're here to do. Um, because if we do nothing, at least at this level, the city council works with communities. That's what I do know. And um, so I, I, I do ask that whatever the follow-up um, is given to Councilman Joyner is given to all of us, um, that if we're initiating a new program, we are all involved and included, and that we find a way to, um, and I love the idea, whoever came up with the idea was brilliant. That's a wonderful idea to say that, um, you know, we're taking time to recognize the people who do the work that don't have an elected title and don't get paid money. They just show up to do the work because it's the right thing to do. And, um, and then if you do something like that, recognize it has a life all its own. Right. And so how do people get nominated for it? Who does the selection? And uh, what can we do? Beyonce, rah, rah. That's something that's tangible. Natalie says she was expecting some gifts. So if somebody, is there a budget for gifts? <laughs> she said they already All right, well, that's a good thing. All right, so somebody's really, really thinking. We want to celebrate and support and coordinate, and uh, communication is the key of it all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Walker, I'll recognize you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Ms. Candace, for coming up and for the courage. I uh, continue to do so, and I pray that this is not just a, um, a, a talking point for us as council members that we implement some action because with the issues she's addressing um, that falls into code enforcement. Uh, Councilman Knight brought up law enforcement, but I think we need to have a conversation about that before we uh, just allow our law enforcement to run rapid before we find ourselves in an aggressive policing situation that we've talked about over council for years. So it's one thing here as council to um, make these comments now, but we need to make sure that we are solid on the plan that we want to see and we're not saying one thing today and changing it, changing it up tomorrow. So as we are in light of our comprehensive plan, I pray that this is a part of our planning moving forward and that we're on the same page to seeing this resolve that Ms. Candace spoke about today. So again, thank you, Ms. Candace, for your courage to come for the conversation. Now I challenge our council members uh, to wrap around what's going to be our solid plan to address these issues. Mayor. If, if we may, okay. can we just move on? Yeah. Well, I, I'll do it at the end of the Okay. Well, if you recognize me. I will. I'll recognize, uh, I'll ask Ms. Catherine Kelsey to please come to the podium. Hi, I'm just kind of going to piggyback off of what Candace Herring said because she's my best friend and I'm over there quite often. Um, you know, the drugs are so bad that they're out there doing them on the sidewalks. I can't even be outside with my nieces and nephews, and it's really awful. You know, and two of her children are autistic, and the speeding, I don't know if y'all can get maybe an autism sign put out there or something like that, because it, it's, it's really dangerous how fast these people are going on these streets out there. 
Um, and as far as the cleanup in the neighborhood goes, I don't know if we can maybe get somebody to volunteer to donate things like flowers, mulch, grass, something like that, to make the neighborhood look nicer, you know, because we're only one, well, <laughs> Three people, four people, you know, that help do things around the neighborhood. You know, I don't even live there, but, you know, like me and Candace, we go to food banks, sometimes an hour and a half away, and we sit there and we wait for the food, and we come back, and we put it in the boxes that are available, and that what we have left over. She has a welcome wagon on her porch, and we put it on the porch, and you wouldn't believe the people that come out there and get the food, and even clothes. I went to a place about two weeks ago and got clothes and put clothes out there. There's so many people in need, but we don't have enough help. And we need help out there. You know, I mean, and as far as the drugs, you know, maybe get the officers to patrol more because I, I'm out there a lot. And there's not many officers that come up and down Amber Avenue. You know, between the little co corner store and there, you know, there's like six or seven of them sitting out there you, doing the drugs right there. You can't even walk into the store without them saying, hey, can I get some money? Or, and they're right there getting high. So I don't know. I'm just asking for y'all's help, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Shall I be recognized now, Councilman Knight? Or? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, again, um, we as council members um, cannot, we're, we're not sworn and we don't carry weapons. And this text that I, I received, and I'll do it real quickly. So I hope that this message found you well. I'm reaching out to express urgent concern about ongoing problems in our community, particularly around the intersection of Branch Street and Amber Street. The area is facing significant challenges with open and rampant illegal drug sales and prostitution impacting the safety and well-being of our residents. Despite the city commendable efforts investing in housing projects such as the renovation of the beautiful apartment complex for seniors, the prevailing crime and drug issue pose a substantiating threat to the quality of life and safety, potential deferring seniors of their residents from living there. We believe that the establishment of a police station at the corner could significantly mitigate these problems by providing a um, constant law enforcement presence. Furthermore, we feel that the um, the approach of involving community engagement, increasing law enforcement attention, and supportive services for at-risk population is central to address these deep-rooted issues effectively. As a concerned member of our community, I can I kindly request your urgent attention to this matter. Could we possibly organize a meeting or a community forum to discuss these issues in detail to explore potential solutions? I get to the end. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to your response. Uh, the city invested in uh, a particular house, a block, a half a block, and it can't even pass inspection due to as soon as they put the new unit at that location, uh, it was stolen. Uh, that area has been known for such a long time, and we're just asking that um, our law enforcement and I'm against police brutality, but I am against, uh, I am for uh, police doing what they need to do to enforce the law. And that's the area of attention. We hear it today. I hear it every day. And I don't care a weapon. None of us do. Um, well, some of us may. <laughs> but we can't go out there. And uh, just uh, the, the picture they sent was a young man who OD right there on that corner. You got people that continue to OD right on the vacant lot that we advocate to tear down the dilapidated house beside the store. This looked like Walmart during the day. And if we see it, our law enforcement see it, our city staff see it. And, you know, I'm just speaking honest, and I'm being very direct. Uh, the senior mom's grandma housing, as soon as the man went in there to renovate it, they stole everything out of all the materials. The cable suddenly is afraid to go over there. Different people is afraid because they're being attacked. And it's known. So I rest my case. Thank you, Councilman. I'd like to invite uh, Teresa Austin Stokes to the podium. <coughs> Good afternoon. I need to talk quickly because what I came up here to speak about first 
First of all, I'm appalled. Uh, Mr. Davis and Ms. O'Ree came up here with some serious concerns. And our city manager sat there with a smirk on his face. These are concerns that are serious. And just like when you're in the meeting, you very seldom look at the crowd. They need the respect and your attention while you're serving in this community. Not only that, they mentioned about a neighborhood award, but I'm upset about the fact we had a huge ribbon cutting for a project that many of you disagreed with, but yet you were present during the ribbon cutting. Unacceptable. Um, Five Points Crossing had their ribbon cutting, and the city council, um, some of the city council members were not present because they were um, in D.C., but that was something that was planned. So I'm just confused as to why a ribbon cutting on such a huge project was not advertised so that the people who really supported the project could have participated in that ribbon cutting. Thank you for looking and giving attention, because most of the time you sit there and you do not respect this crowd. Ms. Ms. Austin, you sit there with Ms. your head down. Ms. Stokes, please okay, refrain. now getting to the point of what needs to be addressed. Um, once again, I'm here to speak about affordable housing. Affordable housing, safe, affordable housing. And after reading the most recent article in the newspaper that shares statements of our city manager regarding future development in the city, specifically in the downtown area, I have more questions that we hope can be answered before this meeting ends. And those present and those who are viewing, we do deserve an answer. Where are the plans for affordable housing? Aside from Five Points Development Project, which, as you know, was the vision and development of previous city council administration. There is no mention in the article of future of affordable housing in the city. Where is the money for affordable housing? And what are the plans for using money that Representative Shelley Willingham secured for affordable housing on the Edgecombe County, Edgecombe County side of the city? And to be clear, the city's contribution to the Five Points Crossing Plan was the land, not $9.8 million. So again, where is the money for affordable housing? Um, another concern is the housing bond. Whatever happened to the planning for the housing bond, there has not been any update to us on the future housing bond. And we know that it would take significant funding that only an approved housing bond can provide to advance the development of decent, safe, and affordable housing. It is retreat time, budget development time, and comprehensive planning time. Now is the time when the council directs the administration to include certain projects in the upcoming budget. It is the expectation of the community that you represent that these issues be addressed, and these concerns need to be addressed sooner than later. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. That brings us to item number eight on the agenda, which is the consent agenda. I'm looking for a motion to uh, approve the items listed as listed on the page on, on item number eight. Motion made by Councilman Walker, second, second. by C Councilman Harris. Any need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Consent agenda is, uh, has moved forward. Uh, item 9 is consideration of a list of dilapidated residential structures maintained by the Community Code Division for de demolition. Um, the requested action has received Council's direction for proceeding with the properties listed for demolition. Has everybody seen a copy of that list or is there a presentation from staff, Mr. Manager, uh, on this particular matter tonight? Thank you, Mayor. The Following last council meeting, the list of all the properties that staff has under code enforcement action are before council, and we are looking for council's direction on how to move forward. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yes, sir. Motion. Councilman Blackwell, I recognize you. Then I'll recognize you, Councilman Walker. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, um, let's go back and refresh what we asked for. We asked for information for the demolition of four properties. And then in our discussion, um, it was um, revealed that we have multiple numbers of properties. Uh, we've been given a great list, not a great list, but a list of, what, 200, 293 properties. However, um, and then we were given definitions at the different levels of um, action, um, process that exists and action that could be taken. 
but we were given a generic list um, numbering one through whatever that is with the parcel number, the address, the county that it's in, which ward it's located in, who owns the property, and then the complaint date. It's hard to know what action to take on this if we don't know what stage of process each property is in. We asked for four specific properties that were burned beyond renovation, which I think the um, discussion revolved around the last council meeting. So I'd like to ask the manager, would he like to go to those four properties and highlight those four properties for us or have someone on his staff do the same? Um, I would like, since we know where all the properties are, I'd now like to know where each one of these properties are in the process evaluation that the um, planning department director provided for us um, so that we understand that all of these properties are not eligible for demolition, or are they? Are all these properties eligible for demolition with the current process? <clears throat> Thank you, Councilman, for your questions. At the last council meeting, uh, it was asked about the status of a few properties which are included on the list that's before council tonight. Um, I attempted to explain that while we understand that dilapidated properties are an eyesore, our staff is moving forward with a process to not only make sure that we can eliminate the eyesore, but to repurpose the property. Now, Demolition on its own is not a tool of first resort, but of last resort. And we follow the statutes of North Carolina. And I said at that meeting that none of the properties on this list do we feel that we have the full legal authority to move forward with a recommendation to council at this meeting. With that being said, we wanted to provide council a list of all of the properties that we have under enforcement action so that the community can see that we are aware of the blight that is in our community and that we are taking action. However, we are all talking about private property and we must follow certain statutes, public noticing for the demolition of someone else's public property. So the properties that are before the council tonight as requested are for council to provide subsequent to provide subsequent direction on each of these properties, and then we will work with our legal counsel to do council's pleasure. So, Mr. Mayor, I want to correct the information. First of all, I've been up here 23 years. I'm not a child. We have not broken the law for 23 years. For 23 years, we have had a process in place with attorneys, with staff members, with engaged publics. And when you talk about neighborhood revitalization and who was here, I was here. So thank you for the lecture, not necessary. Number two, we asked for four properties. We asked for information on four properties. And I appreciate the exhaustive list because it also lets us know that those council initiatives that we were working on, wards one through five, one through four rather, most of these properties reside within those wards. And we were able to help the city staff identify folks that they could collaborate with and partner with. We always understood and have brought information to this city continuously about the need to balance code enforcement with development, with demolition. It was a community that came to us saying that there are some properties that are beyond repair. Your own staff said the four properties that were listed were beyond repair. Now, I'm not playing games, and I don't appreciate being treated as if the things that we request are beyond the bounds of reason or understanding. We asked for four properties that were burned out, torn down, one property has been taken down without appropriate mitigation of potentially hazardous sources to neighborhoods and communities, to, to the people living around it. Somebody's liable for that too. 
So I want to go back. If you want to know what I want to do, give me some more information. Now, you gave us a whole list of, of, of what happens to each house in the process and the procedure. Where are they? Where's house number 25? Who's house number 25? What's the, what's the condition of that property? Where is it dilapidated? Is it tax collectible? What, what is it? I'm asking, because you gave us the categories, but you didn't give it to us broken down here. So if I want to know what can be torn down now, that's what I'm asking. And we asked at the last council meeting about the disposition of those four properties. Where are they on this list? Are they ready to be torn down? May I have a motion, I think, that'll help with, with this? Yes, I'll, I'll recognize you, Councilman Walker. And Thank then I'll recognize you, Councilman Harris. Thank you. I'd like, like to make this, you want to speak? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like to make the motion that we deny the demo of the list received, but we prioritize fire damage structure for city acquisition and for redevelopment purposes. I have a discussion on that. C can okay, you well, state I, that I, again? I, I didn't. I, yeah. yeah. If you would, don't, I, mind, you don't mind doing that so I can get it right, too. No problem. I would like to make the motion that we deny the said demolition list. Demolition? We're good. To deny the uh, demolition list. We're Lightly. good to move forward. But we, we direct city manager. Yep. To prioritize. Fire damage structures. I second that. The city acquisition for redevelopment purposes. In layman's term, we acquire fire damage properties so that we can redevelop them, so that we can stop hearing some of the issues and concerns like we heard today about vacant lots, about cleaning up our communities. Second that motion. And affordable housing. Okay. I have a motion and a second. I'll call, recognize Councilman Harris, then I'll recognize you, Councilman Knight. Councilman Harris. Thanks, Councilman Walker, for your motion. Um, I said last meeting, and uh, Councilman Knight identified these four structures. I asked were there other burn structures? And I appreciate Councilman Walker's motion, Councilman Joyner's second. I think also if the, how many houses that have been burned, if we can know, maybe all of them, if they are behind on unpaid property taxes, let's then proceed with getting a right person in the legal profession to start tax flow, tax foreclosure. That way, one process, we can then get the property in the city's name. We tear down the house, and then we work on the plan to what we can do to help rehabilitate these neighborhoods, incur investment in these lots, and how we can spur uh, home ownership and additional rental opportunities for people here in the area. Thank you, thank, thank you, Councilman Walker. Thank you, Councilman Harris. Uh, Councilman Knight, recognize you. Yes, um, I'm the one that brought the issue up. Thank you, Councilman Blackwell, and all other council members who, who commented on this. Uh, the last council meeting, if the clerk needs to read uh, the motion, the motion was made that if those four burn up houses, well, burn out house, had gone through the process that they be demolished. We did not get that. Uh, and I wrote this, it says, we have probably over 18 burned houses in, in the city. We get notices from the city, from the fire department, anytime that is a structure that is burned. It is imperative that we prioritize the demolition of burned properties these properties are not only unsightly, but also present a clear danger to the public safety. The dilapidated and structurally compromised state pose risks of collapse, which could potentially harm residents and those that are passing by. 
Also, these properties often become haven for crime activities, furthering jeopardizing the security of our communities. Beyond immediate safety concern, these blighted properties have been a profound negative impact on the overall appeal and value of our neighborhoods. Uh, the city manager did not do what the council had motioned him to do, nor his staff. We appreciate the list, but the subject was uh, referring to this list again, the burn up houses on Zenith Court, Pender Street, East Highland, 130 Discovery Street. If those houses have gone through the proper and legal process, then those houses should be torn down. Some of these houses have been through the process, but now change ownership, so they're in the process again, which is probably going to expire real soon, probably before uh, June or our next council meeting. If that's the case, manager, just tear down, make the, send the information to us so we can tear down the burn up houses. I've submitted the photographs. They are beyond repair. They are dangerous to our community. It is simple. It's simple. So again, we, he needs to carry out the first motion that we did our last council meeting. If these four burn up houses, and I agree with you, Council Member Walker, yes, burn up houses have always been the priority. They are unsightly and dangerous. One is right beside Bishop DeLote's church, about to collapse. And if someone get hurt, it's going to be on the city because we know about it. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as I understand, we passed the last meeting that four houses be demolished as per the process uh, as they move forward in that process. So I believe that has been granted and what the council is asking for is an update to that. Uh, in addition, however, what we have on the floor right now is a motion to direct the city manager to prioritize fire damage structures for city acquisition for redevelopment purposes off of the list that was presented to us. Uh, so the motion has been made. It's been duly seconded. Is there a need for additional conversation? Cla clarification. Yes, sir. Go ahead. So will the motion from the last council me meeting be carried out to an addition if this motion passed be carried out? So it's, it's, it's a twofold. Take care of what was presented two weeks ago. If they're going through the legal process, then they'd be demolished. Then we take this list. If it's any other burn up houses on this list out of 300, then they'd be demolished, correct? As I, as I understand it, we've already voted to demolish the four houses. Yes. And that, 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 that is to be carried out, assuming that as we follow through on the various process. I mean, do we have to, I mean, I, I don't know the process. I mean, staff would have to tell us, but I mean, are we at the place where we've condemned it? Do we own the property? Do we have free and clear ability to go and tear it down? Whatever those, that checklist is, it is my understanding council has authorized that as of the last meeting, and that's been the directive. I think it uh, requires a vote, does not it? I, 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 did, I thought we voted on it last time, did we not? We did. We, we, did. we did. I believe we did. But uh, now we don't have an update, okay. which is, which is okay. I think, part of the challenge that we're looking at here right now. So with that, I'll, I'll, I'll recognize you, Councilman Harris, and then I'll recognize you, Councilman Jabars Walker. I, I think before we can actually spend tax dollars to demolish a house or four houses or ten houses or whatever, that those uh, costs have got to be uh, presented to the council for formal approval. Isn't that correct? According to Housing Code uh, Chapter 11, I believe, I passed it out to everyone. That's the code that we adopted, that Peter Barney passed out 10 22, 2022 With that very important point, Councilman Walker, would you be willing to amend your motion to include the words per the Housing Code? Uh, yes, I, that's no problem. Okay, and, and Councilman Joyner, would you be willing? Okay, yes. All right. Councilman Jabaris Walker, would you have a comment? No. All right. Yep. Any need for further discussion? As I understand, just to be clear, uh, we've already voted that those four houses be d demolished. What we're asking for is, where are we in that particular process? 
right, now what we have on the, on the floor right now is that we're to direct city manager to prioritize fire, fire damage structures for city acquisition for redevelopment purposes per the housing code uh, as uh, were presented to us. There's a motion, there's a second. Is there a need for further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion does carry. We did add two other items to the agenda tonight. The next one is uh, a request for an update on our energy efficiency programs. And so at this time, I'll ask uh, City Manager if you have any kind of update that you can provide to us on that, that'd be great. Or if there's a member of staff here who could speak to it. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, at the last council meeting, uh, council asked for a update on the energy efficiency programs to be brought before council. Uh, so last week, I just sent an email just to provide some context about what our business services department uh, already has in regards to uh, assistance programs, as well as an update on the uh, loan program, as I understood it, that was discussed uh, maybe a year or so ago. Uh, we are still working to identify partners in that program, and we hope to be able to provide a, uh, a more uh, robust update at an upcoming Committee of the Whole meeting, uh, but that is the update that I had at the time. Thank you, Mayor. Councilman Nine, I'll recognize you. Uh, yes, we know that Edgecombe County is offering this program, and several of our citizens um, had gone to Edgecombe County, but was denied because they live within the city limits of Rocky Mount. My understanding of that program, if you live within the city limits of Tarboro, and the city limits of Rocky Mount, that you're not eligible for that program, which is replace HVAC, windows, um, anything dealing with handicap accessory. Uh, we have have had for over the last two years or more two hundred thousand dollars to launch this program. Uh, when Peter Bonner was here, we had um, we had a vendor that was committed, um, but we. It did not come back to us because we was in transition of leadership. I'm asking that this council, while our staff is still searching for a private entity, that we launch this program with the $200,000 that's already budgeted for this program. Uh, I just have a email from a citizen, uh, and I would just like to read quickly. Uh, from um, she was pleading. Um, sent a copy of her utility bill and she said I need help now because and here it is you can't make this stuff up good morning mr. Knight you told me to text you regarding the grant to fix my house and uh, she sent me I really need a unit because of this this is killing me it's a picture of a utility bill and the amount of the utility bill is $905.24. And in, under that, she said, I really need a unit because this is killing me. It's killing a lot of people who cannot afford to come out of pocket with eight to $10,000. This program would be no different than anyone who want to tap onto our water and sewer uh, services for our um, water and sewer services. We're already doing similar programs. I'm asking that we take the $200,000, launch the program, and if staff can find a private entity or whomever a loan company, that would be helpful as well. But let's not hold up uh, this program. It's very well needed. At least six people had gone to Edgecombe County. They were turned away. I think they gave those applications to human relation, and so we really, really need this program. So I'm asking that uh, this council, if we give the city manager direction, the money has already been funded, and that we can just uh, launch this program. Thank you. The council, is there a motion in there specific? I make a motion that we uh, proceed with launching this program, energy efficiency. I second the motion. I have a question. All right. Uh, so uh, we're allocating two hundred thousand dollars to look to to start an energy efficiency program. It's already in. And that will be defined it's by it. when the money is already in there. Money is already okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So how are we going to define this? I'm just trying to put some some brackets around it. Well, hopefully, uh, as city manager, he has staff that can uh, who put the program together. They could speak towards it. I don't know if it's Miss 
Okay, so allocated two hundred thousand dollars that the program be then presented to us for I guess final approval. Correct. Next meeting, yeah. I've got a motion and I got a second, and uh, Councilman Joyner, I will recognize you. Yes, of course. All right. Is there additional conversation that needs to be had? Well, someone asked a question, uh, and it needs to be asked to the county commissioners. Uh, if you're living in the county, why is the Edgecombe, I mean, why is the city of Rocky Mount citizens uh, are, are turned away? Uh, we pay city and county taxes. So that's a question. If staff can follow up with um, um, uh, Eric Evans, um, the county manager, uh, uh, to, to ask that question, to bring back to us. I, th I think that's what we'll get. I, I did ask the city manager to check into that. He said he would do it. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Yes, we have talked to Edgecombe County. Yes, they have a similar program. It is, I don't want to speak for uh, uh, my colleague, Mr. Evans, but their program is a temporary program. It's funded with one-time money, and so um, we that may be one some of the reason for some unique stipulations but what i understand from the conversation tonight uh the council is correct we do have two hundred thousand already allocated for such a program and we can prove we can proceed immediately if uh, the council is comfortable with these this program being done as a grant program as opposed to a loan program uh councilman would you like to modify your motion uh, to, to make, is this a grant or a loan program? Do we need f f uh, final approval? Uh, we, I think the, the original was a grant program. Well, it was a, rant, a grant, and then there was also a loan program, was, if I recall. It, it related to it insulation loan, and some other things. About it. I, I think what we had originally talked about was looking at the city, the um, as was stated earlier, yep. that the repayment could occur on the utilities. So if, if the manager's requesting a grant, I'm not going to certainly walk well, away from that. Per perhaps it would be better if we just yeah. make sure we get the program right. next meeting and vote it up or down. I mean, yeah. I, just to be clear. Yeah. If, if, if you're good with that. Yes, okay. yes. And okay, so I have a motion on the floor that um, we um, start the energy efficiency program, that we, we, we advance it forward, that uh, the ne by the next meeting, which I believe is scheduled for April 8th, that we will approve that program and whatever it looks like, whether it's a grant or a loan program or some combination thereof. Is that? Yes. That covers it all. It covers okay. It all. all right. Any additional discussion on this? Yeah. Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into closed Mayor, session for economic uh, Mayor, development. Motion. Before, Mayor, yes. before we do that, with, sure. with my motion, and, and I know I, I don't want to, I know I can't really amend it now, but I want to make sure that we direct uh, our manager to update us with a quarterly update about the housing okay. in the email that he does so that we can try to eliminate some of this confusion, but we can continue to see and follow the status of these homes. So if we can just have a quarterly update. You got that, Mr. Mayor? Okay. Could, okay. Could he also, I got a motion. And could he also add what's uh, the, the budget amount uh, is supposed to be, I do know, at least 200000 and it's and it's not. And so this is the demolition and or acquisition fund, right? Right, that's okay. correct. Because, uh, which is different than what we just voted on. Correct. Correct. Right. Yes. That's correct. All right. right. All right. Now I have a motion and a second going to closed session. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Thank you. May May I do want to? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, tomorrow night at six o'clock, um, uh, we will have War Three meeting of Victory. Uh, please come. We uh, ask. At, uh, over on Daughtry's, behind Daughtry's Oil, uh, we are asking for the area on Brent Street, if the, our attorney and our chief, to look at filing a nuisance complaint against the store on Brent Street. And we're asking that that be done quickly and presented to us tomorrow. In a second, we've already, we've already passed. Economic it. development. Yeah, economic development. Yeah, one more time. Economic development. 